Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. If you're in your homes, if you want to stand with us and let's just invite the presence of the Lord into this service this morning. Oh, God, you're welcome here. Have your way in this place. Hallelujah. Have your way in homes all over Decatur County this morning. Lord, let your presence move in our hearts and our minds and our souls. And let the glory of the Lord rise in this place. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. So we lift our voice and cry. Oh, let it rise. Let it In the presence 
Jesus said, Fear not, for I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, forevermore. And he holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He holds the key to every problem that you have. Oh, thank you, Jesus. While we were singing that song, I just felt goosebumps all over me. And the hair on the back of my neck would just stand up. The presence of the Lord is definitely moving in this place today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. With everything going on in this world right now, you know, we can't just be consumed with just Decatur County, but it's, it's all around the world. And I believe that there are millions upon millions of people at this moment, at this very moment, that are calling upon the name of the Lord that are calling upon a God that can answer by fire, that are calling upon a God that, that, that can do anything that we ask Him. He says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find and knock and it shall be open. He is still answering the needs of this world. And I want to be a part of that chorus today of people praying out to God. Praying to a God that can answer and to supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. I believe, and this is just an expectation, I don't feel like I'm being prophetic or anything like that. But I feel like the Lord is going to do a quick work in this world. That the Lord will do the miraculous in this place and that that, 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 that that song we were listening to it on the way to, to the church this morning and, it, and, and it's just been on my spirit even so come uh, Lord Jesus and I believe that the Lord is wanting to do a mighty work in this place 
Oh, God, and I want to go to the Lord in prayer right now, and I want to pray. I want to pray over this community, but I also want to pray over New York and California and, and New Orleans and all of these other states that are, that, that, are, that are facing this problem right now. Because we know a God that can do the miraculous. We also want to remember Vicky Consiglio. This is Sister Charette's daughter. She was diagnosed with the coronavirus the other day, but she is now over it, but she now has double pneumonia, and so we want to remember her as well and, and many other needs, unspoken requests all around this world right now. If we could just go to the Lord in prayer, Lord Jesus, you are a God that can move mountains, oh God. Uh, you are a God that we could be like the centurion man. God, just speak the word, and it must come to pass, Lord. Uh, Oh, Jesus, we come before the God of all creation uh, who moves heaven and earth, Lord. Uh, God, you are able to do the miraculous, Jesus. Uh, God, you are able to break chains, oh God. Uh, God, that you would step foot into those hospital rooms uh, right now uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, Jesus, God, that we pray that you would move uh, God, that you would minister, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let healing virtue flow, God, all across this country, Lord, and we will give you praise and glory and honor, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, hallelujah, hallelujah, let's sing it. Oh, God, we magnify you. You oh, are a way God. maker. Yes, you are. Yeah. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place. I worship Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you.
stops working. He's constantly in motion, constantly moving in our lives. What a great God he is. What an awesome God he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today at the River United Pentecostal Church. We're honored that you've joined us, church family. I'm glad that you're here with us today and worshiping and hoping that you're experiencing the goodness of the Lord. And God is indeed good to us. Um, I want to make one announcement, and, and this is, uh, i got to make announcements. There's not many that we're making right now. Make two announcements, actually. Here in the next day or two on our private Facebook group page, you'll be getting some details concerning Easter Sunday, so if you'll take a look at that in the next couple of days, you'll see what, what we're planning and what we're going to do to make that as special as we can for every family that considers this their church home. But the other announcement is we had a baby shower scheduled for Kristen Murata. Hey, Kristen, I know you're watching. Keep that baby safe. Amen. Stay in, stay safe. So, but that has been changed to a virtual, a virtual baby shower. I'm not sure how that works because I think sometimes people wish they had a virtual baby instead of a real one, but, but nevertheless, it's going to be a virtual baby shower on, on Facebook on what day? Any, oh, that's it. That's a great thing about virtual. It's just from now until Jesus comes. So, but she's registered on Amazon, but, but you'll see that also on Betsy Cole's page. But we want to do this and honor them. We're excited for them. Amen. And glad that they're going to have a healthy, beautiful baby. Amen. We're thankful for that. I want to I say thank you for your faithful giving. Some of you have used the, the app Givelify, and you can still do that. You can download that and use it. And many have dropped by on your few and rare occasions out of your home and out and about to stop by the church and drop your tithe and your offering off. Thank you for being so faithful. Amen to the, to the work of God and to the plan of God. We want to be faithful to all that God's doing. Um, they're going to sing the song, one of these songs that I love, and then they're going to do a special before we go to the word of the Lord today. But I love this song, We Come Alive at the River. I like, we usually do that when we're greeting guests, but since we really can't do that in the same sense, I'm going to invite you to greet your family near you. This has gone on long enough that some of you are getting on each other's last nerve. And it's probably tough for some of you to worship together right now. But I think it'd be good during this time while they sing this, reach over and hug your husband or your wife. Pull your kids in close and let them know you love them. You're glad they're in church with you today. You're glad they're worshiping the Lord with you today. Let's do that. Just turn it in and love each other. Let each other know you really do care about one another while they sing this chorus and before they go into one final song. There is a river where your goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than my fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current staring deep.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you that have been in the river any time at all, you've heard this song. You've heard us sing this song many times. So sing it with us this morning. For anyone who's ever seen the mountain of their sins just disappear. The hand of heaven reached down through their fear and dry their tears. For any life once empty and now finds itself alive and full of songs, victory songs. Well, then you'll understand the reason for the way the saints of God may carry on. Oh, so when I shine, no, oh, I'm shining. From a heart that's been washed clean When I run, no, oh, I'm running From a past that's been grieving To the world that might look crazy There's just no telling what you're gonna do In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you For anyone who knows the hope That keeps them moving on to troubled days Got a future and a hope beyond the grave. Every life's a different story. How he led us out of darkness into love. And there's no way to keep us smiling. Every breath's another chance to testify.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Without any further delay, I want to go to the word of the Lord this morning. And I pray sincerely that God will speak to us today. To be honest with you, this, this message has been years in the making for me. Several years ago in prayer, I felt the Lord give me this title. I never could get it to all come together. Never could put all the pieces to it together until this past week. It's a long time to work on a message for about, I think about seven years now that this has been marinating in my spirit. And I'm learning that there are messages sometimes that God gives me for right now. You know, that you're supposed to preach them right this moment in time. There are others like this one that God kind of drops into your heart. And it works on you for a while and you, you, you feel it slowly build and slowly grow. And then when you feel the time is right, you feel the leading of the Holy Ghost, that's when you preach it. And I'm thankful the Lord spoke with me this last week and met with me this last week and, and put all this together. And I'm probably still not going to do it justice, but I do really, really pray that God will speak to us in spite of any shortcomings I might have or any human failing I may bring to it. Because this is an hour that we need to hear from God. We need to hear from God. It's not just something we casually put into our day and into our life. But every day, I need to be in the presence of God. And I need to hear His voice. And I understand that for the most part, we we pray and we talk to God. But what we hear out of the Word of God comes through the preached Word. And that's the way that God designed it and God intended it. Now, we read the Word and we're edified. We read the Word and we're changed and we're strengthened. But he says he chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them which are lost. It's incredible value to preaching the word of God. So I pray today that this word finds a lodging place in our heart. Going to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Reading verses 1 through 7. Just a little more. A little more monitor. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 7. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, and more importantly today, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. I want to preach, I pray, under the anointing of the Lord today, this thought, the silent bride. The silent bride. Would you just, wherever you are right now, would you join with us in prayer one more time? I feel the press of the Spirit today. I feel an unction of the Lord settling on us right now, and I pray, God, would you let your word come alive to us? Because your word is your thoughts. Your word is your passion, God. Your word is how you communicate to us. And I pray today, God, that there would be an anointing on the preaching, God, that somehow can transcend a building, that can transcend the physical confines of a structure, can go to where everybody is today, God, and they would feel your presence. They would feel your anointing, that the word would come alive to them where they are. Leave nobody out of this today, God. Every man, woman, boy, and girl that hears this, that watches watches this, that listens to this, let them feel, let them feel the power of the word and let it come alive to them, I pray. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Amen. God bless you today. In, in the design of the human body, which constantly amazes me, which I look at and I still call the greatest miracle in all of God's creation,
I look at the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, all of, all of nature, the trees, the flowers, the plants, and I'm in awe of those. But nothing moves me quite like examining the human body, how God structured it and put it together the way that he did. But in his divine design of this body and everything that he gave us and that we have at our disposal to use on a daily basis, God gave us vocal cords so that we can express ourselves through sound. That verbal communication becomes key and critical to human relationships. But I gotta believe today that as much as we need it for human relationship, that the main reason God gave us a voice is so that we could communicate with Him. We, we can clap our hands. We, we can lift our arms to Him. We can run for joy. We can jump up and down. But I'm going to tell you, none of those things will ever do quite the same thing that lifting your voice to God will do. God gave us the power of a voice. And there is incredible power in our words. When we speak, people listen because our voices have the power of influence. I think that we need to realize that God has designed it so that when we speak to Him, we have influence with him. He's waiting to hear our voice. He's waiting to be moved by our prayer. He's waiting for us to cry out to him and influence him by what we say with our voice to him. We use our voices in many different ways. We use them to express and explain things that we are passionate about. It comes through in the way we say what we're saying. With our voices, we champion our causes. We talk to other people and tell them, here's what I think, here's what I feel, here's what I support, here's what I don't like. We comfort the suffering with our voices. We encourage the discouraged. We incite bravery in some people and we inspire others to action. Our voice is powerful, but most of all, with our voice, we should be pointing people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is nothing more effective beyond talking to God that you will ever do with your voice, but to use it for the purpose of reaching a lost soul, of taking advantage of that voice that God gave you, to spread the good news to every living human being that you come in contact with. You see, using our voice should not be about just adding to the noise of the world around us. Many times our voice is no more than a, a, its voice is no more than a noise. It just fills in to all the other sounds of the world. And if you ever get in a crowd, you hear that roar and that rumble, but nobody's voice is really distinguishable. It's just a part of the roar of the crowd. But we need to recognize the incredible power in our voice and use it wisely. I want you to think about it this morning. God showed us how to release power through the voice from the very beginning. This earth that you and I dwell on, this earth where we exist, it was spoke into existence with just a few words from God. Let there be and there was. In the Old Testament with a vocal command, God ordered Joshua and his army to march around Jericho until the walls fell down without any force at all. All it took was them joining together in a shout of triumph and the sound of their voices caused the walls to fall. The power of our voice is found in the New Testament in John chapter 11. It tells us how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead by simply speaking the words with authority, Lazarus, come forth. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus even looked at his disciples and by default spoke to us and said, if you've got the faith to speak, to lift your voice to a mountain, it will be thrown into the sea. You see, the point is really simple. God gave us the ability to speak and we've been speaking from a very early age because he wants us to know how important it is that we use our voice effectively. And I want you to use it with people effectively. Use it on your job. Use it in your family. But hear me today. There's something about our voice that God likes to hear. There's something about my voice that God likes to hear. He likes to hear the choir, but he likes to hear me sing. He likes to hear church prayer meeting, but he likes to hear you pray individually. He loves it when the church gathers and a voice of worship goes up like the sound of many waters. But can I tell you out of that ripple and that roar, God can key in on your voice because there's something about your voice that God wants to hear. We know from the word of God there are many ways that we should use our voice to communicate with God. 
First of all, God wants to hear our voice in worship. The hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. In Psalm 150, after describing all kinds of ways to praise God, everything from a trumpet to the psaltery and the harp, from praising the dance and on stringed instruments and organs, the psalmist concludes that particular psalm by saying, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord your voice was given to you by God so that you could breathe out praise and worship to him if there's breath in your body you ought to be worshiping God let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord praise him lift your voice right now and praise him there's something about that God loves to hear there's something about your worship that he will respond to we're also instructed to use our voice to speak with God in prayer. This heavenly communication language that God gives to you and I. In Psalm 142 and 1, David said this, With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. I don't just sit around mully grubbing. I don't sit around in silence. He said, but with my voice, I'm going to cry out to the Lord. Jeremiah 29 and 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You know what that lets me know? The prophet is telling us that God is saying, my ear is inclined to the earth. My ear is turned to my people. I'm waiting to hear your prayer. I'm waiting to hear your voice lifted to me. And if you will do that, if you'll come near to me and pray to me, I will hear you. I thank God today that he hears me when I pray. I'm thankful that when I get in my prayer closet and I lift my voice or I walk through the church praying that God hears every word I'm saying to him. It doesn't fall on a deaf ear of God. Even further into the word of God, we know that we can lift our voice to the Lord in times of sickness. James 5.13 says, Is there anyone among you suffering or sick? Let him pray. Let him lift his voice and say, God, I need a healer. I need that God that is my healer every moment of every day. So when you're sick, we know that we can pray to God in those times. And there are some of you that can attest to that today, that you had a fever, you had a headache, you had this sickness, that disease, and God showed up and he healed you, but it only happened after you prayed. There's something about your voice that God loves to hear in prayer. We also know from the word of God that we can speak to him in time of need. Mark 11 and 24 Jesus said, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. It's not just sitting around silently believing inside. It's not just expressing faith within yourself. He said, I tell you, if you will ask in prayer, if you will verbalize it, if you will let your vocal cords express to me whatever you need, you will have it. And probably one of my favorite verses about this is in Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In other words, when I have a need, I can lift my voice before the throne of God very boldly and say, God, there's a desperate need in my home. There's a desperate need in in my family, in my church, and I've got a God that is listening, that is attuned to my prayer, and he will meet my need if I'll believe it and pray it in faith. And most certainly, in light of where we are today, we want, to, we want God to hear from us in times of distress. And scripture gives us room for that. It allows us to pray in times of distress and I'm thankful for that today. I'm thankful in days like this we're not just left to our own devices or we're not trying to just figure it out. And I'm glad for what the government's doing, believe it or not. I'm glad for what the health department's doing. I'm glad they're doing everything they can worldwide to take care of this pandemic. But hear me today, nothing will ever do what prayer will do. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, God in a moment of time can miraculously take care of a virus that they are frantically trying to find a cure or a vaccine for. Why? Because God responds to our prayer in a time of distress. Psalm 50 and 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. Hear my prayer today, O oh God. Deliver us. Heal us. Heal our land. Do it, God. I have no doubt 
There are many prayers that have been going up before the throne of God in recent days and weeks. I'll guarantee you if God would show us, you know, we've got on Facebook the number of views, the number of engagements. I wonder what God has in heaven, his own little meter, his own little guide of how many prayed this week, how many logged in today. I'll I'll guarantee you over the last couple of weeks the prayers have gone up. Talking to God has gone up. More people wanting to find out what God's doing, wanting to be right with God, wanting to get this worked out. So I have no doubt there have been a lot of prayers going up before the throne of God in recent days and weeks. There are petitions for God to heal our land, to heal our world, and those are fitting prayers. We ought to be praying that way. Then there are the prayers, whether we admit it or not. I've prayed it. You've probably prayed it. More than once I've said, Lord, I just want things to go back to the way they were. I just want things to be normal again. Have no doubt God has heard that prayer day in and day out. Lord, I I just want to go back to my job. I want to go back to work. Lord, I I can't wait to be with my family and my friends again. I just want to be able to sit down in a restaurant or a coffee shop and, and be able to interact and fellowship again. And more importantly, Lord, let me just get back to church. And I hope that is one of your prayers. I, I don't want you to be comfortable sitting at home on the couch or the recliner just engaging online, but I hope there's a hunger and a desire and you're praying, oh God, just let me get back together with the church. Let me go back into the house of God with thanksgiving and with joy. Let me enter into his courts with thanksgiving, into his gates with praise. Let me go back to the house of God. And and I have no doubt there are prayers that have gone up like that over the last few days. I pray it every day. God, let everything be right. Let it be fixed. And I know for a fact that God hears our prayers. I know for a fact that God answers our prayers. I've lived too long and prayed too many prayers and know that God's heard them and I've watched him answer them. You'll never convince me that God doesn't hear and God doesn't respond. But I've got to wonder right now in all of the prayer that's going on around the world, all of the preachers, all of the saints, all of the churches, all of the sinners, all the backsliders that are praying right now, I wonder out of all of the prayers that are going up to God, and your prayer may be different than mine, and other churches may be praying for different things, but with all of the prayer that is bombarding heaven, every petition going before the throne of God, I wonder, I've got to wonder today, is there a specific prayer that God is still waiting to hear? Is there a prayer that he's waiting to rise above all the others? But it's not being heard, it's still kind of silence. I'm going to be so bold and go so far as to say that I do believe there's a prayer that God is waiting to hear. It's a prayer that he's not yet heard collectively on a regular basis from his bride. Oh, it's it's uttered every now and then. Go back a few decades and it was prayed a lot more. But as we become more blessed, as things have gone more our way, as we've become the church on the other side of the tracks now, as we've been somewhat spoiled and pampered, as we've lived in a world of freedom and liberty and prosperity and growth, the prayer has slowly become silence. The bride has become silent with this prayer. It's a prayer that God doesn't hear on a regular basis. It's a prayer that used to be pled before him regularly, that people used to cry out. He's waiting for that prayer of even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, would you come back and get your bride Revelation 22 and 20 tells us very plainly, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. Did you really catch that? Looking at the end time events in the book of Revelation. Prophecies that we really don't understand. There's a prayer that goes up at the end of the writing. When the writer says, in spite of it all, with everything going wrong, with one plague after another, with death on the earth, with things being turned upside down, even so, come Lord Jesus. In other words, Lord, would you please come take us out of this world? Lord, would you release us from this earthly body? and take us to heaven with you. Get us out of the temporal into the eternal. I want you to hear me today, people. The rapture of the church is going to take place. You're not going to put it off. We don't schedule that. It's going to happen. 
1 Thessalonians 4, 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You can write it down. You can take it to the bank. It's not going to be long. It could be today. It could be before this message is over. It could be for before the sun sets tonight. The Lord is coming back. Hebrews 10 and 37. For yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I'm telling you God is on the precipice of heaven. Waiting for a trumpet to sound. Waiting for the opportunity to gather his bride in. The book of Romans. The apostle Paul gave this very emotional and descriptive account of the desire of creation for the Lord to return. He says this in Romans 8 and 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. There's a hunger. There's an anticipation out of creation. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. You know what that really means to us? That this creation of the earth that God made, there's a groaning inside of it. God deliver us from this earth. Let us be released from this earthly pound that holds us. There's a travailing. He said together it's groaning, it's travailing until now. But I want you to catch this more importantly. It doesn't stop with the groaning of creation. It's not just nature that should be crying out for the return of the Lord. Because in the very next verse Paul goes on to say, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit which have been born again. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Did you get that? We that have the Spirit of the Lord within us that have been born again. There should be a groaning in our spirit. There should be an anticipation in us. Oh, even so, come Lord Jesus. Oh, even so, would you release us on this day? Jesus. But I got to wonder, are we really groaning within our spirits? Do we really get up every day longing, waiting for that adoption and redemption of our soul? With all the prophecies concerning his return, why hasn't it happened? Flip the pages of Daniel and Revelation, it seems like everything has come to pass. I some days wonder why hasn't the eastern sky split open to make a pathway for his return to get his bride. Why haven't the graveyards burst open around us and the saints of old come come forth triumphantly into the heavens. The word declares it. It's going to happen. The preachers have preached it. It's going to happen. But maybe it's happened because there's a reason. I wonder today if it's happened because the church has become the silent bride. We pray, but not the prayer he wants to hear. Maybe the Lord's waiting to hear a prayer from us that he's not yet heard. Revelation 22 and 17. And you got to hear this. you got to catch this. this. is the spirit of the whole message. It tells us what's missing. It says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And the spirit and the bride say, come. I have no doubt today the Lord is more than ready to return and take us out of this earth. He doesn't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to struggle. He doesn't want us to deal with everything going on in the earth. I'm telling you, you're a blood-bought child of God. His desire is not for you to be fighting things on this earth and to be so love with, in love with this world that you can't leave it. He's longing for us to be in heaven with Him forever. This place that He has created for us to spend eternity with Him. I believe He looks toward the earth every day with His ear attuned to the voice of His bride, listening for her prayers. He's listening every day for what we'll say. But day after day, it's just another prayer. Oh God, I need healing. I need a deliverance, God. Would you heal our land? Would you heal our world? 
God, we need food in the cupboard. We need money in the bank. And oh Lord, it's that another prayer of would you just let things get back to normal. But I'm telling you, I feel strongly what the Lord wants to hear out of the church today is that prayer. Even so, come Lord Jesus, in spite of it all, would you come back and take your bride? I wonder when's the last time you found yourself looking at all that's happening in the world and instead of praying for God to make everything normal again, you begin to travail and to intercede and pray even so. Come Lord Jesus. Oh, I understand people are hurting. Even so, come Lord Jesus. I know there are people that are sick, but hear me. Even so, come Lord Jesus. But preacher, there are backsliders. I know and I want them to be right and I want God to reach them. But I got to pray. Even so, come Lord Jesus. But there are sinners that are lost. God, reach them. Please reach them. But hear my prayer today. Even so, come Lord Jesus. How long has it been since you looked to the heavens during your personal prayer meeting and it came groaning out of you? Even so, come Lord Jesus. Don't get me wrong, I love life. I love all the blessings God's given me. I love having the church family here. I love my own family. I love all the things that God has for us. But I want him to hear my prayer today. I'm so homesick for heaven. I'm so homesick to leave this world. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Hear our cry today, God, above it all. Even so, would you come and take your bride home today? He's listening. His ears are tuned. But what is he hearing? I'm afraid he's hearing a silent bride praying so many other things. But the prayer he wants to hear is even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Why don't you find a place to pray right where you are? Find a place to talk to God and say, God, don't let me be so in love with this world. Don't let all of my other prayers drown out the one that you really want to hear. I got a feeling if the church would rise up and begin to pray, we'd never have to worry about another pandemic. We'd never have to worry about another world war or nuclear holocaust. We would have to worry about upheavals and stress and fighting and, and all of these conflicts. But if we would bind together and pray the prayer that he wants to hear, that God would do some incredible things. Even so, even so, even so. Even so come. come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, somebody pray it today. Even so, Lord Jesus, even so, even so, Lord Jesus, even so. Lord Jesus, come. come on, make that your prayer. Let it come out of your spirit. There be a groaning. We're waiting. We're anticipating. We're hungry for it, God. Ready for you every time. Terry. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh, yes. So we wait, we wait for you. Oh, yes, God. God, we wait your coming. Church, ready 
with the saints of old around the throne of God can't wait to be able to go to a restaurant and enjoy a meal with friends but even more to be able to sit down at the table at the marriage supper of the Lamb oh, what a day what a day what a day what a day I'd like to see the day that they let us back in the hospital to make hospital calls we've had a few people I've needed to go see and pray with can't do that but even more that day in his presence where there's no more sickness. There's no more death. It's just life forevermore. What a day. I'm more hungry for all of that than anything here on the earth. So I encourage you today. I encourage you. Let that become your prayer. River Church family, it's going to become our prayer. We're going to hear it often. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Give us revival until you come, but even so, come, Lord Jesus. Sinner and backslider, we're praying for you. We want you to be saved, but it's not going to stop our prayer of even so, come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that in some way you've been blessed, you've been touched by the Spirit of the Lord, by the worship, the singing, by the, by the Word of God. We love this church. We love our God. We love what God is doing, and we're here to be a blessing and a help to you in any way we can. Just a phone call, a text away. Reach out to us. We love you today, church family. Do something great for God with your life and the time that you have. Find some creative way during this time to be a voice of God to somebody that needs to hear it. Most of all, stay committed, stay faithful. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday night.